Hi, so welcome to the live stream today and welcome to the premiering of our uh, discussion for the December 2022 examination as we begin the journey, run through a couple of key issues that you need to understand, take into consideration as you prepare yourself for the December 2022 examination. I see some of you guys joining, you are welcome. Give us a thumbs up on the video when you join, but most importantly, comment in the comment section on the chat box. Let me hear from you um, where you are watching us from and any questions you have for me and something you want me to share my thought on. I also want to hear from you, for those of you wrote the August 2022 examination. Um, how was the question structure like? I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on a couple of the papers and then how we can position ourselves going into December 2022. So for those of you who sat for the August 2022 examination, let me know in the comment section or the chat box uh, your take on the examination structure. Was it to your expectation? Uh, did you do well? In the exams, do you think what you wrote will uh, be able to put you in the spot to be able to pass the examination when the results uh, are released uh, pretty soon as we prepare for the examination? So give us a thumbs up on the video. Let me hear from you in the chat. Any questions you have for me, let me... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Any questions you have for me, put it in the chat for me. I'm going to be reading all your comments and uh, sharing my thoughts on them as we get into the uh, discussion today. Now, I'm going to be doing two things broadly today. I'm going to be sharing with you uh, my thoughts on the uh, August 2022 examination, and that will help us to then find out how we can prepare ourselves going into uh, the the December 2022 examination. So we're going to be sharing some thought on the August examination, some of the scripts, the questions, and uh, what you should also put yourself in, uh, uh, in the position to be able to go in for the uh, December 2022 examination. So comment in the chat box. Let me hear from you. Any questions you have, put it in the chat for me. Some questions coming in. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do we have here? Bontil... Nalide said, good evening. Good evening, Bunto. Thanks for joining us on the stream. Dennis Kiwanga said, that's nice one. Almighty God bless you, sir, for what you're doing for us. Amen. God bless you too for joining us on the stream, uh, Dennis. Uh, okay. That's great to hear. Any questions you put in the chat for me, uh, and uh, we'll be able to provide you with some uh, thing in that particular case. Then uh, Suleiman Abubakar said, uh, Inshira, good evening. I wrote CR, AA, and AT. I expect to pass all. That's great. That's great. That's great, Suleimana. Hoping that uh, your results will be good there as we come in there. CR, AA, and AT. That's great. Uh, but share with me what's, what's your take on the paper generally? Uh, because, I mean, I've had conversation with a couple of people and they are like, oh, Shira, the exams was difficult. Some may were saying oh, the questions were some way. It's sort of, let's let, share your thought with me. Uh, basically, let me know uh, what your thoughts are in, in terms of the structure of the exams. And then what do you think you will be doing for going forward as we go into the August sorry, December 2022 examination. So put it in the chat for me. Let's see uh, what you have for us. And then we will be able to provide you with some assistance as we get into the uh, uh, exams or we get into the discussion. So one of the things that you need to be careful about is that there is a blueprint for the ICA exams. There is a blueprint. Now, I'm going to be sharing with you three top strategies that you must implement if you want to pass the December 2022 examination. I'm going to share with you three top strategies. Now, the reason I'm saying there is a blueprint for the ICA exams is that, you know, there is something that you need to uh, look out for. There is something that you need to do if you want to pass the ICA examination. And it is, it is not magical. It is not magical. So let me bring up my screen and then Let's get excited into some of the discussions real quick as we look at these uh, in our discussion. So let's see what we got here. Uh, let me quickly bring up my screen. Where do where are you at? There we go. Let's put Inshira somewhere. <laughs> let's put Inshira there. Uh, that's better. 
Okay, so Deborah Boatin said, I'm Deborah, a first year student of KNUST reading accounting. Okay, that's nice. And I hope that uh, it's going on well with you. First year, I mean, you'll be chilling a lot with uh, some of the easy issues in, in, in the, you know, accounting. And I hope that it's going on well with you and you are not finding any challenges uh, as you prepare for your, uh, you know, or as you continue with your degree course. Now, this is the financial reporting paper, for instance, in the August 2022 uh, examination, the financial reporting paper. Now, I keep on telling you always, if you're a follower of my work, uh, and you, you, you guys know about this a lot. I mean, it's not something that is magical. Give me a moment. I want to bring up my writing part here. Let's see what we got. I always tell you that the ICA exams has a blueprint. Yes, there is going to be question on ethics, like financial reporting. Yes, there will be question on um, ratios. Yes, there will be question on consolidation. Yes, we know there will be question on, uh, how do we call it, some theories coming in on consolidation or and uh, conceptual framework and regulatory framework. Yes, we know there will be question on the IFRSs, the standards, and that is 40 marks relating to single entity and the standards dedicated question. You know, if you are going into the December 2022 examination and you are writing financial reporting, there will be questions on this. It's not magical. You don't need deliverance. You, you don't need any soothsayer. You don't need any prophet to tell you what is coming in the ICA examination. Whatever is in the syllabus, is going to be coming, financial reporting. Everything we've listed here will be there. So how then do you position yourself to pass the examination? By learning. That's all. That's all. You cannot sit down one week to the exams and start being serious. And I'm going to be sharing with you three top strategies you have to implement today in order for you to put yourself in the position to pass the examination. I'm going to share my thought with you on that. So look at look at the exams. Number one, or question one, is on consolidated financial statements. Very beautiful consolidated financial position, you know, question with some intra-group trading. Certainly fair value adjustment situations uh, coming in in that particular case. And, uh, you know, not, not anything serious or anything complex. Uh, the year is consolidation. And if you understand the principles that underline the preparation of the consolidated financial statement, you don't need deliverance on this one. You don't need deliverance on this one. Then question two was on standards. The sale and lease back there, six marks, IFRS 16 uh, and IFRS 15 situation coming in there. There was a question on financial instruments, IFRS 9. It's a fundamental standards you must know about. There was a question on IAS 37, provisions, contingent liabilities, contingent assets, IAS 8, accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates and errors. Then there was a single entity financial statement, profit or loss, and statement of financial position. It's going to be there. Now, this semester, there was a 20-mark question on ratios. Look at it. 12-mark questions on calculation of the ratios, 8 marks question on the interpretation of the ratios. And look at the question. It's not miracle. It's not complex. It's not challenges. The challenging. There are no much issues that has to be adjusted for or dealt with that much. And that is ratios. Then question five had 10 mark questions coming in on ethics. 10 marks on ethics. 10. Then suddenly some theory issues on consolidation for five marks and some other theory issues relating to IFRS 5, provision uh, non-current asset held for sale and discontinued operation. So you, it, it's going to be there. So if you wrote the August examination, financial reporting, for instance, and you come out and you're like, oh, the ICA exam, no crowd here. Oh, now the ICA exam, now the ICA exam. What has the ICA exam done? What has the exam done? Because everything you are expected to be examined on is there. You don't need a miracle. 
but it, the structure of the questions are getting better. The quality of the ICA examination is getting better. What does that mean? It means that you cannot just sit down, solve some miserable past questions, and go into the exam hall and think you will pass the exams. You will fail. So the secret then is you need to learn. You need to study. You need to really put in the work if you want to pass the examination. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. That is financial reporting. Everything that is supposed to be examined is examinable or has been examined. And if you followed my work for the August 2022 examination, all of these things I've shared my thought with you on them, that this is what is coming. So you don't need a miracle. You don't need deliverance. You don't need anybody to tell you that, oh, uh, uh, in the December exam, eh, this is the question coming. You don't need anything like that because whatever is in the syllabus is what the examiner will be writing. That's it. Or that the examiner will be setting questions on. That's how you pass the examination. That is how you put yourself in the position to increase your chances of passing the examination. So that is financial reporting. Very sweet, simple, straight to the point. But many people were complaining. Oh, Shira, hmm, there's a man. Hmm, there's a man. Hmm, there's a man. Hmm, there's a man. Hmm. No, you have to study. You need to put in the work. Let me give you another example. This is management accounting. In management accounting, there are basic topics the examiner will set questions on. Performance measurement will be there. Short-term decisions are going to be there. Uh, uh, Short-term decisions, I made mention of the fact that, you know, uh, break-even analysis uh, is going to be fundamental when it comes to dealing with short-term decision because of the marginal costing principle. Then issues about budgeting, issues about variance analysis. What else do you need? Everything is here. The examiner is going to be examining balance call card. Something about it is there. Then the issue about uh, cost sheet and cost card using activity-based costing. It's there. What do you need again? Variance analysis, 10 marks. Calculation of, you know, overhead variances. It's there. What do you need again? Um, issues relating to, uh, you know, preparation of a rolling budget. Budgeting and budgetary control. 10 marks is going to be there. It's going to be there. Then there's a short-term decision question using break-even analysis, whether the entity should acquire the new plant. And that is a relevant costing decision making. And you're using the break-even analysis principle, meaning that you are going to be using the marginal costing principle to make the short-term decision for the co company or the organization. Then question five, another cost card or cost sheet question that you are supposed to do calculate on and there was nothing about directly really about break-even and not, uh, investment appraisal. Now, if you're a follower of my work, when I'm analyzing management accounting, one of the things I tell you is that the examiner may decide not to bring any question directly on investment appraisal. If you're a follower of my work, I've said this over and over again. So what do you need? Everything in the syllabus the examiner is going to be examining you on. So if you are going to put yourself in the spot to pass the December 2022 examination, it means you need to do certain things right to be able to pass the examination. You need to do certain things right to pass the examination. But the thing you must understand here is that the ICA exams is getting better. You know, when they finished writing the uh, financial reporting and I saw the paper, I'm like, geez. I, 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 then the corporate reporting, I saw the paper, I'm like, geez. Why? Because you see, the quality of the questions, the structure of the questions, the verbs that the examiner is using, it's getting better. What does that mean then? Like I said, it means lazy people will not pass the exams. It means the only way you can become a chartered accountant as soon as humanly possible is if you sit down to study. You cannot roam around, be lazy, going around, doing your business, taking care of your family and everything, 
and one week to the exams, three days to the exams, try to attend all manner of intervention classes and expect to go and pass the exams. You will fail. You will fail. Why? Because the exams is now rewarding people who have thoroughly, underlined that, thoroughly studied the syllabus. That's the deal. That's the deal. Because that is what it is. Let me share public sector accounting and finance with you. Look at public sector accounting and finance. You, like, you will love it. Whatever you need to pass the exams, it's no miracle. Okay? Unfortunately, the public sector, I think I don't have it pull up, but I can put it up like this. I think I have it as an image here. Let me put it up. Public sector accounting and finance. Question one. Now, you know what question one is already. If you're a follower of my work, I've said this over and over again, that question one, it's going to be surrounding or being about issues in relation to the basis of accounting, measurement basis, and issues relating to accounting concept and uh, those things. And that is what is there. You don't need a miracle for that. It's going to be there. EPSAS is fundamental now in PSA. It's going to be there. Then you go to question two. Question two was about financial statement preparation. Oh, Shira, <laughs> the financial statement preparation, I didn't know that this... No, no, you don't have to focus on anything. Go and sit down somewhere. You are preparing financial statements. Let's see if I can bring this up. You are preparing the statement of financial performance, statement of financial position of the organization. It's going to be there. PIFA. Okay, you want PIFA? Yeah, PIFA was there. Where is it? This is it. 10 marks question on PIFA. It's going to be there. Reasons why Ghana should carry out PIFA assessment. You don't need a miracle for that. You don't need a miracle to write the answer to this question. Why? What are the importance of PIFA assessment? You don't need a miracle for that. The advantages of doing PIFA analysis... You don't need a miracle for that. It is going to be there. It is going to be there. Public-private partnership arrangement. It is going to be there. Suggest so an appropriate PPP for each of the three projects. Yeah, it's something that examiner will ask you. So there are illustrations given to you, and the examiner is asking you to suggest the PPP uh, method that can be used for the respective project that has been given in the question. And these are the projects. Massive road construction that will cost in excess of $10 billion. What method should we use? Drastic improvement in the electricity power generation and distribution. What method should we use? Effective management of the University of Ghana Medical Center to increase revenue. What method should we use? If you understand public-private partnership arrangement, this is not a miracle. So, so what am I trying to say in, in a nutshell? What I'm trying to tell you is this that you see, you can easily pass the ICA examination. But if you're lazy, underline the word lazy, if you're lazy, you will write the ICA exams 10 times. And for some of you, you're going to give up. And if you give up and go and do something else, that doesn't mean you are stupid. That doesn't mean you are, you are failed in life. But it simply means you are not cut out for this. Because some of you will stop and go and do your master's and come back. And you will go and do your master's and come back and the same attitude. So you will take a longer period of time and at a point you will give up. I've been teaching this since 2013. I'll be celebrating 10 years of teaching this next year. And so I've seen a lot of things. I've seen people, they write a paper, laziness, they won't study, put in the work, do assignments, do nothing. They write, 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 they will fail. Then they will go and do their masters. And then they come. They will come back. They will be right, 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 uh, still laziness. And they will be complaining. Oh, the ICA exam is difficult. Oh, the ICA exam is difficult. It's not difficult. The blueprint is there. It, it, the blueprint is there. Whatever the examiner will be asking you, it's there. You, you don't need a miracle. You don't need a miracle. You don't need deliverance. You don't need fasting. 
You don't need 40 days of fasting. You don't need to pray on any mountain to be delivered to pass the exams. If you work hard, put in the work, put in the effort, put in the sacrifices, you can pass the examination, hands down. You can pass the examination, hands down. But you will not pass because of your laziness, because you're not willing to put in the work. So my overall is this, that, hey, the ICA exams is getting better. That's it. The ICA exams is getting better. And only people who are willing to go the extra mile, people who are willing to work hard will be rewarded. If you are lazy, you will fail the exams. And guess what? You will write the exams 15 times. And some of you will give up along the line and go and do something else because you are not cut out for this. It all depends on you. And that is what you need to understand. I see some of you guys joining and you are welcome. And thanks for joining us on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up on the video, uh, guys. I want to see you give us a thumbs up on the video. Really will appreciate it and it will help us a lot. Uh, so we can reach a lot of students just like you and assist more people. So give us a thumbs up on the video, guys. Uh, let's get some engagements coming in. But most importantly, put in the comment section for me in the chat box for me. Any questions you have and uh, something you want me to share my thought on. But remember that our enrollment is ongoing for the August 2022 uh, examination. And we will be uh, starting our live lectures on 5th September 2022. We'll be starting our live lectures on 5th September uh, 2022. Uh, the key things is that when you enroll with us, you are going to be getting access to the live and recorded sessions uh, of our lectures. You will also get access to live practice questions on our portal. This is a new feature we are adding on, on our portal. We've added on our portal. You'll be able to practice live questions to test yourself, manage time very well before you head on into the examination. You'll be able to also get access to the examination analysis document, providing you with the blueprints on the key issues, the structure and the tenses and the various things you must understand about the questions. Then you pass first time guaranteed subject to the terms and conditions because remember we will be giving assignments, we'll be doing performance evaluation tests. So if you put yourself in the environment well, your pass mark is going to be uh, guaranteed. Definitely you'll be able to join our executive evaluation masterclass and also be uh, lectured, study under my mentorship and with a team that we have here to be able to help you to prepare for the examination. And you get all these at 4.30 Ghana cities. In case you want to enroll, you can check the description of this video. The first link uh, will lead you to our website or you can download the Insura Premium mobile application on the Google Play Store or the App Store so that you can uh, study under my mentorship. So we assist you to pass the examination. So that's my take generally on the August 2022 uh, examination. So based on that, Going into December 2022, what the heck are we supposed to do? Um, how do we position ourselves to pass the uh, December 2022 examination? What must we do? What must we um, take into consideration? So I'm going to be sharing with you three top strategies that you can adopt and implement right now in order to put yourself in the position to be able to pass uh, the examination. Three top strategies that you can implement right now so that you can uh, pass the examination. Let me bring back my slide and let's get excited about the discussion quickly. Oh, that's too small, Shira. Okay, that's better. Three top strategies. Three top strategies to help you to pass the December examination. Strategy number one, it's going to be planning. Listen to me carefully. You cannot begin this journey without adequate planning. There are some of you that um, you are still waiting. Uh, you've not decided yet whether you're going to be writing the exams or not. And then you are waiting. Some of you two are waiting. Uh, you will make the decision maybe a week to the exams. 
or you make the decision when the ICU opens registration for the exams. No, you need to plan ahead of time. So you need to plan. How am I going to be studying? Now, this is going to be a 12-week, uh, you know, session. If we're going to be having 12-week sessions, you need to plan yourself out. You need to plan your day out. You need to plan your time out. How are you going to be studying? Now, why is planning important? Because remember, many of you are, you know, family people. You know, you are working. So corporate exits, executives or whatever the heck it is. So you have family, then there are some personal commitments that you have to also take into consideration. Planning helps you to block time out so you can prepare to study very well. Because remember what I just shared with you a moment ago. The blueprint to pass the ICA examination is there. You don't need a miracle. You don't need anybody to tell you anything. You don't need any uh, magic wands from anywhere so you pass the examination. You don't need anybody to lay hands on you and pour oil on you before you can go and pass the examination. No. The blueprint is there. There is an, the, the, you can pass the exams easily, but that requires planning. You need to decide in advance how you're going to be arranging your schedules out. If it is going to be a 12 weeks uh, lecture, how are you going to design yourself out? How are you going to be learning? Where are you going to be learning? Whom are you going to be learning with? The school that you're going to be choosing, the lectures that you are going to be attending. Will it be weekend? Will it be weekdays? Uh, how are you going to plan yourself out? It's very important. I don't want you to sit down and, you know, when we are in October, November, then you start planning and say, oh, I'm planning that I'll write the ICA exam. No, you need to plan ahead of time. Yes, maybe some of you you've written, you wrote the August examination and now you are waiting for your results. But you know the rest of the papers you are left with. Probably this is not your final paper. So maybe you've written, you wrote FR and maybe MA. But you, have, you are left with the rest of the level three papers. Okay? So you start planning on the level three papers. So plan and make an assumption as though you will pass the exams. All other things being equal. Then you plan. Now, if it comes and you have not passed, you did not pass the exams, all you do is to switch the subject you did not pass in place of the subject that you are planning to study for the December examination. It's just a matter of switching. So to sit down and say, I'm waiting for my results before I decide on what to do in December, I mean, that is not wise. So plan out. Take into consideration family. Take into consideration your work. Take into consideration your personal commitment, but you have to plan. It's very important. You have to plan yourself out. That's very crucial. That is very, very crucial. You need to plan yourself out. Very important. Number two is going to be tuition. Listen to me carefully. I've said this and I keep on saying it all the time. I don't care how shark you are, you need to attend a tuition center. I don't care how many times you think you've written the paper and what you think you know, you need to attend lectures. Very, very important. Very, very important. So tuition is very, very important. Let, let, see, let, 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 me be, let me tell you this. You have to attend lectures. Don't tell me, oh, Inshira, <laughs> I have a friend, eh? he said that the public sector, eh? hmm. he, he didn't do anything. No. He, he sat down uh, and then uh, three days to the exam, he just picked a book uh, by uh, somebody and he read through and he went to the exam hall and then, you know, he passed. Are you so dumb? Like, so your friend did not study. Studied for three days, went past the exams. So you two, you do, you wait three days, you study, and you go and pass the exams. What are you smoking? What are you eating? What is running through your brains? You got to be serious. You have to attend tuition. I say this always. When we put 10 people in a room to study on their own and sit for the ICA examination, the probability that anybody or any one of the 10 will pass the exams is 1 over 10. Meaning, 
probably only one, only one person of the 10 who do self-study will pass the examination. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Yes, I've I've heard people, they are like, oh, I did self-study and I, I and I passed the exams. I did self-study and I'm now a chartered accountant. Good. It is not everybody that has the capacity to do self-study. Some of you, simple Googling, you don't even know how to Google things. If we ask you to make do it, undertake a Google search for something, you don't even know how to do it. So you need guidance. You need mentorship. You need somebody to tell you, this is how you study the topics. This is how you study the subject. These are how the topics are interrelated. Uh, these are assignments you have to look at. These are performance evaluation tests. You need to be mentored. That makes the journey easy and interesting for you. So the second thing is tuition. You need to buy books. You need to buy the ICA question kits. You need to invest in what you're doing. Don't tell me you don't have money. You do have money. You do have money. Because if you have money to buy an expensive phone, or you have money to be uh, driving an expensive car, or you have money to be putting on expensive weave on and putting on expensive perfume and expensive clothing, you cannot put money into your education, which is for your future. Come on, man. You, 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 you've got to be smoking something if you tell me you don't have money. You have to invest money because many people, the reason why they don't go to attend lectures is partly because they don't have money. They said, oh, Shira, I don't have money to attend lectures. So the money sitting in the bank, what is it doing? Especially the times that we are in, one of the dumbest things you can do is to save money. You have to invest it. And one way is into your education. So don't let the money be sitting in your savings account or the savings account and be struggling to pass the ICE examination when you can pay some amount of money for 30 Ghana cities or whatever, 500 Ghana cities or 600 Ghana cities and get quality education to pass the exams. Don't be stupid. Do not be foolish. You have to attend lectures. You must buy study materials. You must buy question kits. It is very important. So number one, planning. Number two, is tuition. Like I said, I will not recommend that you sit at home and do self-study. It will help you. You need to be mentored. You need to belong to a community. You need guideline. You need somebody to hold you accountable. You need somebody to hold you accountable. That is how you put yourself in the position to pass the examination. This is not about my try, my quiet. This is not about inshallah. This is not about debi debi ebe. This is not about, oh, uh, by the grace of God, it's going to be good. No, you got to study. You got to attend class. So be part of a community. Depending on wherever the heck you are at, there are a lot of tuition centers. My goal for you or my, my plea to you is attend lectures. Wherever it is you want to attend your lectures, attend lectures. You can go to the ICAG website. You will see the list of the partner in learning. Select one and attend lectures. It's very important. It's very, very important. So yes, you have to plan. But number two, you have to be able to also attend lectures. Now, the third thing is about revision. Number three. So you need an effective revision. Let me bring back my, you know, slide here. Revision. That's a strategy number three, revision. You see, the reason you want to attend lectures is to enable you to be able to, uh, you know, understand the key topics, okay? Know how the topics are interrelated. Know how to study the topics or the subjects. Be part of a performance evaluation test. Be part of assignments. Be part of a community that helps you. But then... Revision is very crucial. Listen to me carefully. 
you cannot be revised if you have not attended or gone through the process. Revision is really, really important to help you to be able to pass the examination. And for us here, at uh, for our tuition, our revision usually starts six weeks into the exams. So six weeks into the exams, I wrote six months here. Yeah? But six weeks into the exams, we start with our revision. Then two weeks to the exams, we do our intensive executive revision masterclass. Why do we do this? We do this because this is where we will be doing the Saturday and Sunday, you know, Saturday, Sunday evening lectures. It's, it's a revision time where we are solving questions, uh, dealing with problems, solving performance evaluation test questions, solving assignments. That's, that's, those are the things we do during that time. So our revision starts a bit earlier so that you will be able to then go over everything that has been done from week one. Then our two weeks intensive executive revision masterclass, which is going to have four uh, sessions each for uh, each subject, we are going to be going through it as well. But the third thing is having an effective revision. Please, I am not saying attend, or I'm not talking about attending intervention class. Intervention class is for people who have been studying. Listen to me carefully. Because some of you, you think attending intervention class means it's a miracle. So that you go and pass the exams. You will definitely fail. Because the intervention class is for people who have been studying already so that they can have a crash uh, course, go through certain questions, be guided on certain specific issues so they can go in there and pass the examination. So I'm not talking about waiting two weeks to the exams, one week to the exams, and attend intervention class by Kofi, by Ama, by Akosia, by Nanado, by Baumia, by this, by that. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. But this is the revision that you do for yourself, by yourself, intensive, to put you in the position to be able to pass the examination. To put you in the position to be able to pass the examination. So you need to plan. You need to decide. Are you sitting for the November, August, uh, sorry, December 2022 examination? If the answer is yes, which subject are you going to be sitting for? Assuming you passed all the papers you sat for in the August examination, then which papers will you go going to be sitting for? Decide that. Based on that, put up your study plan. Now, in case you don't know how to prepare a study plan, there is a link uh, below this video. You will see how to prepare a study plan. You can check it up on YouTube, certainly on my channel, and learn how to prepare a study plan. Design a study plan down and start studying. Don't wait. And that is one of the things that, you know, you get, we've had students already enroll and they are already studying for the December 2022 examination. Because when you register, you get access to the lecture videos for April 2022 and the lecture videos of also August 2022. And that is a complete lecture video for you to go and pass the examination. So you start studying. And that puts you in the spot so that even before we start with the live stream sessions, you are in the position to be able to actually understand the syllabus better and flow with the routines better. That's the thing you must understand. So you plan. Do not forget about attending lectures and you must have an effective revision if you intend to pass the examination. I see some questions coming in. Let me know. Uh, any other questions for me? Put it in the chat. Put it in the comments for me. I want to hear from you. Let's see. What do we have here? Deborah said, I didn't read business as a course at the SHS level. Please, can I write the ICAG and please advise me on my decision to write the ICAG this December coming? Yeah, you can write the ICAG, Deborah. It's possible. If you are in the university doing your degree, KNUST, uh, it is good that you'll be even doing the IC alongside if you have the money and you have the capacity because it's going to drain you. It's going to drain you financially and drain you emotionally, drain you mentally, drain you psychologically, drain you. What else? <laughs> Everything-wise is going to drain you. 
So if you have the capacity, then why not do it? Uh, and it it is it's it's you don't need. Yes, having some background is okay. It's a plus, but that doesn't mean if you don't have an accounting background, you cannot do the ICA. You can't do the IC. So yes, you can start with a level one this December, and you go two by two. All right. So in the December, you can write financial reporting and uh, business law. Okay. Financial. Did I say financial reporting? Sorry. Financial reporting. Reporting is in level two. Financial accounting and business law. Okay. Financial accounting and business law. So you can do two by two. Okay. So financial accounting and business law in December. I don't know how uh packed your degree program this semester is or next semester will be but you can go to two okay you, you see this thing is not it's not competition it's not like yo yo i want to write four papers i want to write no 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 please take it easy all right go two by two go at your own pace okay go at your own pace so you don't die so i would suggest that maybe you take two papers because of the fact that you're already doing a degree program in K and UST, and you do financial accounting and business law, all right, in December, then probably in April, you can, 2023, you can then do management accounting, introduction to management accounting, and then the business uh, management and, uh, you know, what about intro, uh, business management and information system, whatever the heck is there. You do that too as well. So, Yes, Deborah, you can do it, but my recommendation will be probably taking it to you uh, because of uh, the fact that you're already uh, doing a degree program and uh, probably you don't have a lot of uh, time at your disposal. But hey, why not? If you have the capacity, you can go for it. But, you know, let's be reasonable. Operation Tutu will be better for you. So it's a good decision, Deborah. Uh, you can do Tutu, financial reporting and business law in December. Then you can do uh introduction to management accounting and business management in april 2023 that way i mean the load will be lighter you can get more time to study and cover the syllabus very well solve a lot of questions have a proper revision then in august 2023 you can come to the level two and then you do some of the papers there then you know who knows by the time you have your degree your you know ica is also attached to it and you have a better advantage so that is what i would say there deborah it's a good decision you can go ahead with it lukeman jackman said hi Ishra, always standing strong yep Ishra, has the tuition fee increased yes our courses is now three uh 430 ghana cities 430 ghana cities per paper uh deborah if you are still watching let me know if that makes sense for you and if you have any follow-up questions you can bring it up revision is the word okay um Nodge Hini Clinton said hello. Hi, Clinton. Then he said, What is the CPA program? Oh, the C it depends on the country that you are in. Certain countries have CPA. Uh in Ghana, we have the Institute of Chartered Accountant. Uh, but in other countries, they have the certified public uh accountant uh, there. So that is used in many countries. I think South Africa and zimbabwe australia usa canada you know those countries they use the cpa program and the syllabus of that also have different uh context and content that you must understand there i don't know why you are asking that but if you give me some specifics i will be able to provide you with some uh understanding there not said i'm um, in cameroon okay all right that's fine so any questions, put it in the chat, put it in the comments for me. I want to, you know, hear from you. Give us a thumbs up on the video, guys. You guys on YouTube, I don't know. Give us a thumbs up on the video. It helps us a lot to reach uh, a lot of students. Give us a thumbs up on the video if you're getting some values uh, here or some value here on the stream. So we're going into December 2022. Let me say this that most of the things that you need to actually pass the exams is available already on our channel here on youtube but you know like i say always for those of you who want to you know go the extra mile get access to everything very well and uh, be part of the community 
you can enroll in our full courses and uh, get access to the entire lecture videos and study under my mentorship with the team here as we assist you to prepare for the examination. Now, you want to make sure that you read our terms and condition page carefully before you enroll in a course uh, because um, we have some, you know, strict uh, terms and conditions available uh, for students before you enroll in the course. So you make sure you read the terms and conditions if you are comfortable with this, with it. Uh, you will be able to then enroll in the program. Uh, one of the key issues there is the issue about assignment and performance evaluation test. Our program is a mentorship program. It means we hold you accountable. We are not here to organize class, take money, and uh, you come to class when you like, you come to class, misbehave, go away, a teacher come, talk, 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 go away. No, 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 that's not the, the program we run here. It's a mentorship program and we hold you accountable. It means assignments will be given. Performance evaluation tests will be given. If you decide not to do the assignment, you decide not to do the performance evaluation test, when we are discussing those questions, you will not join or you don't join the class. If that continues for some time, you may be uh, rusticated from the school. That's all. Suck you and you go away. That's all. Because the ICE exams, to pass it, you need to be somebody who has thoroughly gone through the syllabus. Thoroughly. You cannot do shabo shabo here. Okay? You cannot wait two weeks to the exams and start being serious. You will go and fail the paper. Because you get to the exam or the question is there. The question is familiar. You, you can see what is happening, but the way to start the question, you can't even start. Why? Because you don't understand the principles. You don't understand the concept. You've not gone through the machinery of solving questions. So you want to make sure that uh, you do that very well. And uh, if you're excited and you want to really be part and be held accountable, you can enroll in our program and uh, study under my mentorship with a team here and let's assist you to prepare for the examination. Humphrey said, great, Inshira. Which paper should one combine in level two if he's to write two papers at a time? A uh, combination of papers uh, in level two, financial reporting and public sector is a good combination. So financial reporting can go with uh, public sector. Uh, the reason is that, you know, Public sector is uh, reading with about 35, 40% calculation, you know, coming in there uh, for the period. And it's very simplistic in my, it's very simple rather uh, there. And uh, there is IASs and IFRSs in financial reporting. And there are IPSAs in uh, public sector accounting and finance. And many of the IPSAs are just a flip of the accounting standards that you know already in the IASs and uh, the IFRSs. So good combination will be financial reporting and public sector accounting, number one. Then uh, you can also do management accounting and uh, financial management I don't know the papers you have left in level two. Maybe if you have, if you tell me some of the papers you have in level two, I will be able to, I mean, provide you with some answers there. But we can also do management accounting and financial management or management accounting and principles of taxation, a good combination uh, there. As you know, principles of taxation also has some readings and some uh, calculation areas that we need to understand and look out for there. So Humphrey, that is the uh, thing I would say there. Any other questions? I see some of you guys joining. Uh, please put your questions in the chat for me. I'm going to take all of them. Is it advisable after my degree to do master's in accounting or the CPA program? Please advise. Uh, uh, it depends on what you want to do and the organization you want to work for. Masters is, uh, CPA is a professional certification, professional qualification, and so it, it will be more celebrated than masters, all right? So it depends on the industry you are in. There are certain industries they require that, you know, you have to be a CPA holder to have certain positions in the organization and make more money. There are certain industries also they don't care about CPA. They don't care about professional certificates. If you have the master's, you will still be given, you know, the qualification that has to be given. So 
I will say that for after the first degree, maybe you do the CPA program. It's a professional qualification. And how the world is going now, uh, belonging to a professional organization, belonging to a professional institution is better. So that when you finish with a CPA, you know, you can do the master's later on. Alternatively, we've seen people going to do master's and coming back later on to come and do uh, their professional qualification examination, the CPA or the ICAG. But my route, the, the best route I would advise is after your first degree, you know, you do the CPA. That's that's the best uh, thing that we can say there uh, in that case. Uh, but the issue you must understand also is that the CPA may limit you geographically or and jurisdictionally. Let me put it that way. The masters may give you options globally, all right? Because may, I'm using the word may, because if you have, let's say, masters in business administration, uh, it could help you to work in, irrespective of the, the institution, it could help you to, you know, get some job in various countries. But then if you have a CPA, you are in Cameroon. So if you do CPA in Cameroon, that is geographical. It's limited to Cameroon. So if you cannot take that same CPA and hold certain position if you go to uh, the United Kingdom, because there you would have to then go and do the Institute of Chartered Accountant, England and Wales. You cannot take that to Canada because you would have to go and write a Canada CPA examination. You cannot take that to the U.S. and, you know, start with certain roles. So they all have their pros and cons. They all have their pros and cons. But belonging to a professional institution is a, it's a bet and it makes it more easier for you to change from one uh, professional body to another professional body to position you to be able to become successful. So certainly after first degree, doing the uh, CPA program will be a good thing. Okay. Clinton. Sally B said, hello, Inshira. I checked the course list on your website, but I could not find level one courses. I want to know if you don't provide online tuition for level one uh, courses. Um, we are yet to confirm about that because over the period, we hardly have students applying for the level one. So what I want you to do is that you can hit us on WhatsApp, 050 Let me put it on the screen. 050 We are yet to confirm on that uh, because our lectures will be starting on uh, 5th September 2022, but we are yet to confirm whether we will have the tuition for the level one. If you are outside Ghana, plus 233-050-114-9296. So you can hit us on WhatsApp and any development will be uh, mentioned because we hardly, you know, have requ uh, people coming in to do the level one programs. But if we have a lot of people coming in and requesting for, definitely we will uh, provide tuition for that. Look, one said, time management in the exam is my major problem. Wrote PSA twice, had 40 and 45 in both. I attempted two questions and the time is up when I'm trying to feed on the financial statement. Wow. Two questions in three hours. That's really, really tough. That's really, really tough. So yes, time management is it's very, very important. This is why we are launching the live online uh, you know, practice question portal. So I don't know if you have a role in any of our courses for the December examination, but uh, we have that online. That, that is one of the issues we want to handle. So in the live online, uh, you know, practice question portal, you'll be able to read a question and that there, there's a timer there. There's a countdown there and the clock is ticking and the clock is ticking. So that puts you in that agency mood right throughout the 12 weeks that you are learning and preparing for the exams so that by the time you get to the examination, your brain has accustomed itself with the time management and agency and the, your ability to be able to process information as quickly as possible to answer the questions. So that is one of the problems that we want to deal with. That is why our online question portal, it's going to be helpful. So that once you practice that over and over again, and there is going to be numerous questions, okay? There's going to be numerous questions. Once you're able to go through that 
over and over again with our performance evaluation test and all that, you can then know how to manage the time and improve upon it as you go into the exam hall. So that is what I would say there. Um, wrote August anyways, hoping to pass. Okay, so it means that is your third time writing. Okay, that's your third time writing, hoping to pass. Definitely, uh, I'm hoping that you'll be able to, you know, pass the examination uh, coming up. Uh, 40, 45. Yeah, it's, it's, possible that if you work hard you'll be able to sail through this time around but going into the future like i said our online portal like this with a live question platform uh there it will really really be a game changer to put you in that spot so that you can prepare well for the examination and pass the exams i want to be an external auditor yeah definitely then you'll go for the cpa okay you go for the cpa you go for the CPA. So, uh, Notch, Haney, Clinton, you go for the CPA. Uh, if you want to be an auditor, I mean, master's, it's not your, your 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 thing. So, go for the CPA after your first degree and, you know, you'll be good there. You'll be good there. Humphrey said, I have FR, PSA, MA, and principles of taxation to write. Right. So, I think I mentioned or spoke about the combination earlier. So, you can do FR and PSA in uh, December, then in April 2022, su 2023, subject to the fact that you write and pass, you can do the MA and principles of taxation in April 2022. So I think uh, that would be a good combination there. Humphrey Ashikwe. I think I got that right. Ashikwe. Yeah. So FR and PSA or MA principles of taxation. FR, PSA, MA principles of taxation. FRPSA, MA, and Principles of Taxation. Then Amma said, what papers in level two is one exempted from with first degree? First degree in what? Sister Amma, first degree in what? We need to know the first degree you are coming in with. If it is degree that is not business related then you won't get any exemption all right uh, so what kind of degree are you bringing sister Ama? let me know the degree you are bringing certainly if it is a business related uh you know degree uh maybe become or bsc or whatever the heck b or whatever the heck then you'll be exempted from auditing and uh, principles of taxation, I think so, in the level two, in addition to all the level one papers. Okay, so uh, if it is business related from a recognized institution, certainly you will be exempted from audit and assurance and then uh, principles of taxation, audit and assurance and principles of uh, taxation. You wouldn't be exempted from financial management because, I mean, financial management is now the only that is the only paper in finance. Okay, so first degree in accounting. Right, so you'll be exempted from auditing and principles of taxation, uh, all other things being equal. Auditing and principles of taxation so that you'll be left with PSA, uh, FR, um, MA, and then FM to write in the level two, then the rest of the papers in level three. So, Sister Ama, you get auditing and uh principles of taxation you get all the tenant principles of taxation but i heard that cpa is being issued by the kenyan university that is what my university told me um i don't know about that so you can you know speak i don't i don't know about that i cannot speak to that effect you know so Maybe I can check up on that. What you want to do is you can look at the you can look at the regulatory body in Cameroon responsible for the CPA and inquire from them if your university provides that. Okay, Clinton. If your if your university provides that. So it's, it, so I think, I don't know, UPSA, 
in Ghana here, I mean, they have a, th that program available. And so some universities have the programs available like that so that as you are doing your degree, you will also be doing the professional course alongside. All right. So check uh, about it well to see if uh, that is true. And if your university tells you that, that means uh, they prepare you to write the CPA exams so that by the time you finish with a degree program, you are also a CPA qualified, you know, accountant. So uh, check that from the regulator in your country and then uh, you can get a further inquiry from your university as well to be able to know what you have to do. Okay. So that's it about that. Any other questions for me, please? Any other questions? Amma, let me know if uh, my answer to your question is okay for you. Let me know that as well. And then any other questions, you put it in the chat for us. Give us a thumbs up on the video, guys, if you are getting some value here. And let's get more engagement coming in on the video. So we're going to be strategizing ourselves. We're going to be going through uh, everything that we have to go through. Uh, so let's see. So from tomorrow, I'm going to be starting, you know, with the teaching and going into uh, the various things that we need to understand for the various uh, subjects. So put in the chat for me or the comment section for me, what subjects do you think we should, you know, start with what topics do you think we should uh start treating give me topics don't give me subjects really give me topics what are some of the things you would want me to you know start treating or taking you through uh in in the on the live stream starting from tomorrow put it in the comment section for me or in the chat for me those of you joining us on the on facebook you can put it in the comment section for those of you joining us on uh you know YouTube, you can put us in the chat. Amma said yes, thank you. All right, that's great. There, so we're gonna be starting and then going through uh, the lectures or the courses, and to be able to give you the blueprint on the various things that you have to uh, focus on to be able to pass the examination. But like I said, our enrollment is ongoing. You can enroll in a course today right now and actually start studying even before our live uh, sessions which is starting on uh, 5th of September 2022 but before then we're going to be having our orientation session that will enable you to have an understanding of how you know generally our programs are going to be like as we go into the December 2022 uh, examination. Remember that we have some of our books also available if you're writing public sector i mean this is a book you want to get uh, it covers everything in the syllabus and also has questions i mean we have about 20 questions on almost everything that the examiner can ask you questions on uh available in this book that you can get access to so it comes with practice questions as well as everything in the syllabus that you have to look out for very simplified public sector book covering everything in the syllabus then also our financial reporting this is a notebook we released this year uh, financial reporting covering everything in financial reporting uh, if you're a follower of my work, you know, simplicity is something that is very crucial uh, uh, to me. So we covered everything in financial reporting, all the standards with practice questions. Very, very important with practice questions. And you can get uh, copies of this book as well. We also have the copy reporting books available, volume one and volume two. We are uh, preparing to release uh, a new book on taxation uh, for level two as well as level three. And that will be coming in possibly uh by next two weeks it will be available in ghana uh by next two weeks we are hoping uh, that it will be available in ghana almost work is almost done uh with it uh outside so uh it will be available in ghana in next two weeks our new taxation books coming up uh, but you can get access to these books as well to help you to prepare for the examination ama said is financial reporting and financial management a good combination ah huh. You know, it's 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 not about really whatever combination is good. These are two independent papers. That's one thing you must understand. There is nothing in financial reporting that is in financial management. 
There's nothing in financial management that is in financial reporting. So there are these are two separate <laughs> papers. So you can do it. If that is what you want to do, you can do it. But there are two different papers. And the demand for them, it's a lot. Because financial management has a lot of issues that you must deal with, has a lot of computations that you must deal with, has a lot, the structure of the financial management, it's a bit bunch. And financial reporting also, you know, has a lot of work you need to do. The standards, 40%, consolidation, ratios, huh, it's a lot of work to do. So, if that is the only paper you have, yeah, maybe fine, you could do that. But I would not recommend it if you have other papers available in level two. That is why I recommend, um, you know, financial reporting and public sector. Because there are certain things that are combined there. The workload in public sector, it's more reading so as you are doing more calculation on the financial reporting, you then balance off that with a little reading in public sector, then, you know, you are balancing it off. You can do it, but, you know, uh, just know that there are two separate papers and the work requirement is dif uh, it's difficult. So if there are no other papers in level two, and these are the only papers you have available, fine. But if there are other papers, then I won't recommend these two combinations, Ama. I don't recommend these two recommend uh, combinations. Let's see, what do I have? Daniel said, dividend policy and efficient market hypothesis. Okay, so that is in financial management. Uh, let me put these down. Dividend policy and efficient market hypothesis. Number two, then Clinton said, um, what are the opportunities offered by CPA? A lot. Like you can be an auditor, you can be an accountant, you can be a CFO of a company. You know, it's, it's unlimited. It's unlimited. It's unlimited. All right? It's unlimited. You can be an internal auditor, an external auditor, you know. A lot, just a lot. Once insurance starts teaching, results are coming out soon. <laughs> yeah, results will be out at most by 3rd of September at most. But uh, all of that things being called, either it will be before that, uh, so, but at most by 3rd September, uh, your results will be out uh, there. So probably anytime, you know, from next week, you know, the results don't blow. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. Augustine Raymond said, I want to know if treat corporate finance. I don't I don't understand your question, Augustine. What do you mean? Your PSA book was a groundbreaker for me. Okay, that's nice to hear, Jackman. Uh yeah, because you know it's a simplified uh book straight to the point we don't have a lot of bs's just we go straight to the point and uh with the practice questions available in there and the simplicity of the material you know makes it great makes it great so thanks very much uh for that augustine let me know what you meant by this uh, i don't i think maybe there's a typo issue or something like that let me know about that yes what would you want me to t start taking i've received dividend policy and efficient market hypothesis what else would you want me to you know start taking from tomorrow on the live stream as we you know begin the journey for the for the december 2022 examination what else do you think we should uh be looking out for as we go into the exams Okay, so let's see. Jamil Imuru said, as a new entrant is in part three, which papers will you recommend to be taken first? 
Um, I recommend you go two by two. So in two by two, copy reporting and uh, advanced audit and assurance. Okay. Uh, what's the name again? Jamil. Copy reporting and uh, advanced audit and assurance. But remember that for the first time, you have to register for all the papers. So even though you are registering for all the papers, I have said this over and over again, I don't recommend you taking all the four papers unless otherwise you are a full-time student. But if you are somebody with children, with family, busy work schedules, don't try. You will fail all the four. So two by two, all other things being equal. So if you are going for two by two, then do corporate reporting and advanced audit and assurance. The reason for the combination is the relationship between the two papers. There is ethics in either side. Your knowledge in the accounting standards in copy reporting will help you to do audit procedures, audit evidence in uh, advanced audit and assurance. And, you know, the papers are, you know, just intertwined. Copy reporting, you are doing the hardcore calculation, computation and issues. Advanced audit and assurance, you are doing a hardcore reading practice issues. So that would be my recommendation. Advanced audit and assurance and copy reporting as the two papers that you, you know, focus on to write in the August 2020. Did I say August again? December 2022. So Jamil, that is what I will say there. Matthew Abutari said, when will August results be released? I cannot give you the date because I am not the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana. All I can say is at most by 10 of September, the results will be released. In other words, anytime from next week, be, be expecting your results. <laughs> anytime from next week, be expecting the results. So at most by next week, by this time, you know, next week by this time, ah, the result is already out and cooking, you know. So I cannot give you a specific date because the ICA has not done that yet. It's something that probably as we go forward, they will be doing so that we have specific dates for the release of the, uh, for the results. But we know it will come out before, you know, the new session starts. So at least next week about this time, probably, you know, you will be receiving the results. So that is it, Matthew. Uh, about to re, I don't know, did I mention that right? Yeah, so that's it about that. Jamil, let me know if my explanation makes sense for you for your questions there. Let me know about that. Then Augustine Raymond, like I said, I did not understand your statement or question, but let me know if you can rephrase that for me so I can provide you with some answers there as well. So in putting everything into perspective, the main thing that I want you to understand then is about discipline, okay? So at the end of the day, all you need to do is to discipline yourself if you want to become chartered accountant as soon as possible. As soon as possible, you need to discipline yourself. Okay, now somebody may ask, what do you mean by discipline yourself? It means attend lectures. It means do assignments. It means partake in performance evaluation tests. It means practice a lot of questions. It means revise regularly. That's what I mean by that. Don't wait later and start being serious. Yeah, I know you're going to say, yeah, Ishira, you know, I, I am a married woman. I, I have children. I am a busy person. You have two options. There, there's only two options available for you. Option number one, focus on your marriage, focus on your children, focus on your job, and stay how you are. That's the first option. I know that is not what you want to hear. You see, life, that is how life is. And I put it plain to people so they understand it. And if you don't get it, I don't know. That is the first option you have. Stay with your family. Take care of your children. They will get. They will grow and come and take care of you. We thank God for their life. Amen. Work. Continue to do your work. Continue to have fun. Chill. Forget about ICE. Forget about anything. Just be with your family. Or option number two. Sacrifice. That's it. 
you got to sacrifice. Because if you're a family person, you are busy working, you have children, you are married and all of those things, and you want to do ICA also, man, you have to sacrifice. So you have to decide. It's not every time that you can be with the children. It's not every time you can be with your spouse. It's not every time you can be at a funeral. It's not every time you can be at a birthday party. It's not every time you can take the girls' girls out. It's not every time you can spend with friends. You have to decide. You have to sacrifice something. You cannot hold on to everything and still be able to pass this ICA exams as early as humanly possible. So these are the two options available. Stop the IC. Don't even start the IC. Focus on your family. Focus on your marriage. Focus on your job, and be there. Okay, you are. It's not by be just be there. But if you are going to decide to become a chartered accountant, there has to be some sacrifices. Don't come and tell me, Shira, I'm a marriage person. I don't have time. Nobody cares. ICA doesn't care about the fact that you are married. The examining board doesn't care about the fact that you are busy at work. They, when they are setting the questions, they don't take into consideration that, oh, these people are workers, so they don't have time to study. So let's set the question in such a way that even if somebody studies small crowd, the person will be able to pass. They don't do that. The only question they ask themselves is, is this question up to the international standards, period? <laughs> so it's, it's your take. If you have to pass the exams, discipline, sacrifice is the way to go. You have to give way for something. You cannot be attending funeral, uh, wedding, birthday parties every Saturday and Sunday. And taking care of your children, going to work every day, and expect to go and pass the exams? What are you smoking? What are you eating? What is running through your head? You will fail. So you have to sacrifice. And it's a temporary thing. I'm not the one to tell you how to live your life. But you have to understand that something must let go. That's it. You have to give up something. For those of you who have not, you are who are not married, cried here. You, I don't know what to tell you, people. If you are not married, that is the best gift you have. You don't have children. Oh my goodness, that is the best gift you have. Because when I speak to the married people, the people with children, they are like, "Oh, I wish I had done this before I got into this." So if you are not married, you don't have children. What is your problem? From work, go and study. From work, go and study. From work, go and study. That is your life. So that you can chatter as soon as possible and start chopping money and become successful. That's all. So for those of you who are not married, you don't have children, the best gift, that is the best gift you have. It means you have a lot of time at your disposal. So what you need to do then is to know what to do and what to, not to do. Today, the, your friend has called you, oh, let's go to a birthday party. Tomorrow, let's go to funeral. Tomorrow, let's go to wedding. Then you jump in, jump in, jump in, jump in like a hawk. No, you got to sacrifice. So if you're not married, you're not a family person, I expect you that when you sit for the ICA exams, you pass one time. Why? Because you don't have any excuse. You don't have any excuse. You don't owe any, you don't owe responsibility to anybody. Because when you are married, it's a different thing altogether. You know, you cannot just get up from your spouse in the night and say, I'm going to study. What are you smoking? It has to be communicated. There has to be discussion. Uh, your spouse should support you. What if your spouse is not ready to support you? So maybe in the dawn, you get up to study and uh, that is the time that your spouse also wants to enjoy and chill some more. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Like, what you're going to do? 
Maybe you get home, you finish doing everything, then you want to study. Then here comes your daughter and say, mommy, 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 what do you do? You can say, hey, go and sit with daddy and let me study. You cannot do that. You got to be with her. You got to sing for her. You're going to take care of her. You're going to do her homework. You're going to, you know, be, spend time with her. That's responsibility. But if you're not married, come on, man. You're free agents. <laughs> you chill. You study. You, st- you sleep. You, ch- you study. You eat. You sleep. You work. You eat. You sleep. Just like what I do. Very, very nice. No trouble. No pains. So that is what I would say uh, to you generally at the end of the day, that um, if you are going to pass the exams, you need to discipline yourself. You need to be ready to make some sacrifices because that is the only way you can pass the exams. That's, that's it. You need to make some sacrifices. Maybe you reduce the parties, reduce the funeral, reduce the birthday and weddings. Nothing will happen. Oh, if you don't come to my own, me too, I won't come to your own. Who cares about that? I don't give a shit about that. Nobody cares about it. Don't be a people pleaser. Focus and work on your goals. Because at the end of the day, your goals, when they they are realized, that's how you become successful and that is how you live a better life. Don't live your life trying to please people. Live your life and love yourself because even the Bible said it. You love your neighbor as yourself. It means you have to love yourself first before you can love someone else. So if I'm going to do something for you that will hurt me, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it because if it hurts me and I'm no more, I'm not capable, how can I help you? next time. So you got to make some sacrifices. You got to discipline yourself because that is how you generally become successful. Daniel Mensah said, what are the career opportunities when someone chatter? What are the career opportunities when someone chatter in Ghana and beyond? A lot, I think I just mentioned this. You can be an auditor, internal, external auditor. You can work in an investment company. You can be uh, a CFO of a company, depending. Uh, Again, it's unlimited. An internal auditor, external auditor, you can work in the government institution as, you know, a chief internal auditor, as an accounts officer, or as an accountant. You can be at a controller, accountant general department. I mean, the opportunities is unlimited. Because especially if you're going to work in accounting for the public sector organizations, I mean, it is an advantageous if you are, you know, a chartered accountant. Then in the private sector, also the same thing. It is advantageous if you are a chartered accountant and there are various roles that you can take within the organization or within the company. You can be part of the internal audit team. You can be part of the audits committee. You can be part of the, uh, you can be in the accounts. You can be part of finance. You can be part of, you can be the CFO of the company or any other roles as well. So the career opportunities are, you know, unlimited if you are a chartered accountant. Jamil said, your guidance is okay. Thanks, sir. All right. Always a pleasure. (laughs) Right. So that's it about that. And uh, that's what we want to, you know, bring to your knowledge and uh, share with you today as we begin the journey officially for the uh, December 2022 examination. So I'm going to be coming your way same time tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. here on YouTube as well as on Facebook uh, as we, you know, continue with our journey and, you know, start with the various issues that we have to focus on and how we can study, you know, the subjects together to position us to be able to pass the examination and most importantly, most importantly, become uh, successful. So thank you guys for joining me on the stream. Remember that if there are any questions that you have or something you would want to uh, know about further inquiry before you enroll in our programs, you can reach us out 050-114-9296, 050-114-9296. Or if you need any of our books also, that is the same line you can WhatsApp and uh, we will be able to provide you 
with an assistant and arrange for delivery for you nationwide and uh, help you to be able to get the book. So for any other inquiries, you can reach us on there or visit our website, insurapremium.com. Uh, download, you can also download our mobile application on the Google Play Store or the App Store. The name of the application is Insura Premium. So when you just type Insura Premium, you know, the application will pop up and you'll be able to download it, get access to free lecture videos, uh, blog posts, and other contents to help you to really put yourself in the position to not only just pass your ICA examination or your CPA exams, but become successful because there are other contents there that relates to personal development and success that will help you to, you know, w do well. So that is it about that. Remember the three key issues that we, we discussed that you need to plan, make sure you attend lectures and have an effective revision. When you plan ahead of time, choose the right teaching center and attend lectures, get the books, get the materials that are necessary and you have an effective revision, you will definitely pass the exams. Thank you very much and I'll catch you same time tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. as we continue with our discussion. Till we meet again, stay safe and stay blessed.